All right, we got your gaming news wrap up with the gaming news wrap up guy. His name is Sam Iskovich from Ars Technica. How's it going, Sam? Can't talk right now. I'm doing my dailies on Fire Emblem Heroes. Oh, you too. Uh, I got it too. I got it too. I got to open it up. <laughs> um, I don't. I don't like it. Oh, cool. <laughs> Boom. Great. Segment's done. Uh, I gotta go. Peace. <laughs> I don't Let's... like the voice. It kind of sounds like a, car a little kid's cartoon character. <laughs> you mean that guy? <laughs> okay, let me turn well, this off so I'll, we can hear you. I'll tell you what's weird is that I've been playing it for the past 24 hours, and I haven't heard a, a single piece of music or any sort of audio. None of the audio plays on my version of Fire Emblem Heroes. I don't know, but it doesn't matter because it's still fun. Um, wow, I had that lined up as the last thing we talk about. Why don't we talk about it first? Because we're already talking about it. Uh, uh, Nintendo released that uh, their new game, Fire Emblem Heroes, February 1st. What do you think? Well, I uh, dug in for, I, I would say, about the same 24-hour period that you did. And I am very interested in its take on Gotcha, G-A-C-H-A. This is a genre of questy game that you'll find mostly in Japanese smartphone shops that really emphasizes this sort of slot machine random toy pool that requires spending money. Uh, they really want you to to play a sort of quest in which you get excited about getting more characters and more heroes. And instead of going with Pokemon, which has a zillion characters, they went with Fire Emblem, which has been going since the late 80s as a series that debuted on the Famicom in Japan. It didn't come to the United States until years later. But the game is interesting just in terms of sheer gameplay. You're uh, managing some armies. You've got four characters that you drop on a little chess-like field, and you take turns, you first and then the enemy, moving your pieces around and having them fight each other. Uh, and the way the gotcha system works is that certain battles and quests as the game gets harder you're going to want more specialized characters. And to get exact kinds of characters, you can't just enlist them or pick them. You have to go and spend the game's microtransaction transaction currency, which is orbs in this case, uh, in order to randomly generate a hero. You can, you can pick the color, red, bl blue, green, or clear, and these have different attributes for your battling and what, whatnot, but ultimately the game is going to decide which hero you get with the either game money or real money you spend. You can earn these orbs in the game, but you're also able to buy them for about 66 cents a pop. Each hero costs five orbs, give or take. There's discounts if you buy them then in bulk in a buy more, save more sort of way. But Nintendo has toyed with this sort of microtransaction stuff on the 3DS, but not so much on mobile phones. We've had Mitomo, which lets you like decorate your house, but that's pretty stupid. We have Super Mario Run, which is the total opposite and lets you just pay once and be done with it. This is really Nintendo's first, in my opinion, big push into free to play. Hmm. Now, I mean, there are there are good ways to do free free to play, and then there are ways where you feel as a gamer, as a player, kind of exploited by it. You've spent enough time in with the game and the mechanics of everything to, I'm I'm sure, at least have a sense of of where this falls on that spectrum. What do you think? Ye yeah, th what's interesting is that the game starts out making it very easy for you to feel like you are never going to need to spend money. It gives you some of these orbs for free. It gives you more orbs if you link your My Nintendo account to the game. Uh, but what a lot of people have been doing is loading the game, getting their initial allotment of orbs and generating characters and hoping they're good. And if they're not good, deleting the entire game in the save file and trying again. <laughs> uh, and then waiting until they've finally gotten characters that are higher star ranked or more powerful or more rare. And then at that point saying, cool, I'm assigning my nine Nintendo my Nintendo credentials and going forward. Uh, but I managed to, on my second try, uh, I wiped them once and tried again, get a pretty decent cast. I'm like, okay, I don't want to do this all day. Uh, so in that sense, you can start off not having to pay. You've got the characters you need, but it starts nagging you a little bit about stamina, which is a way of saying, after you play so much, you need to either wait or pay up. You can get little items that let you reduce I this timer, but this is a lot like Farmville and a lot of those sort that. of games. And there have been a lot of mobile games that do that. I hate that crap. Yeah, uh, I do so, too. That's, that's and I really, like... I really wish Nintendo would have just said, you know what, you could pay us $15 and we'll just let that 
little bit of stress go and you'll still, you know, we'll still nickel and dime you in other ways. Uh, but what else, the other part is that I think later in the game, as stuff gets harder, you're going to need more specialized characters and more specialized things and pay up for extra boosts. I, I, it's hard to tell only after 24 hours, but I can see on the horizon where the money tree grows for Nintendo in this sense. Mm -hmm. Do you think they're really just sort of testing the waters here? Because Super Mario Run, you pay $10, you're done. Um, versus the, you know, pay to, you know, the microtransactions, as you say, do you think they're just kind of seeing what's going to work? Or do they really think that Super Mario Run was better fitted to the pay once and be done and it's Super Fire Emblem Heroes, <laughs> sorry, Fire, bloody, bloody, bloody. Fire Emblem Heroes is more suited to the microtransactions? Clearly a giant fan of the series over here. No, I think what's interesting is Nintendo has essentially done the total opposite side for its two first big smartphone games in terms of you've got your pay the flat fee and you've got your pay a whole bunch here and there. And they're going to see what the market reacts to. And I imagine go forward that way. I think it's kind of smart on their part to go, let's try both, see what gets the gets the hook and then do the same thing with the future games they have more projects coming animal crossing is the next one which is a little town building game super cute and i'm going to assume that one's going to be more micro transaction transaction -y since you buy shirts and decorations and all that sort of stuff so but it, now they'll have the bottom line they'll have to show the stuff to stockholders and i imagine the stock prices will res re respond better to this than to super mario runs quick decline in the in the charts yeah, because uh, for for better or for worse, if you love it or you hate this whole in-app transaction, transaction, microtransaction thing, it makes money. People like they they pay a lot for these things. That's why game developers continue to do it. So uh, I'm sure that'll work for Nintendo as well. Uh, okay, so moving on, we've got the PS4. Apparently, they've announced uh, some important updates that are coming up here pretty soon. Some new features. First, uh, support for external drives. Why is that a big deal? So if you run out of space on the hard drive on your PlayStation 4, that's it. You have to pop the thing out and take get a whole new bigger hard drive and stick that in and swap the data between them if you are installing games. These have shipped with uh, half a terabyte drives, which seems like a lot of space, but because you have to run everything off of the hard drive as opposed to off of the disk, it's installing everything. That's gig after gig after gig. If you were just... In, been enjoying games for a little while, especially the downloadable stuff that comes from um, PlayStation Plus, uh, that'll fill up really fast. Uh, Xbox One, on the other hand, allowed you on day one to plug in your own hard drive uh, with th via USB and add more capacity that way. Just simple, like, you know, go to the store and get one of those $40, $60 little guys and boom, you've got yourself another half terabyte or whatever you want. Uh, for whatever reason, perhaps because of worries of piracy or worries about maybe the, the whole uh, account uh, brigading that happened on PlayStation 3 that was a whole snafu for them. Whatever the case was, they blocked this, and now they're finally saying, cool, you're going to be able to plug in your own hard drive, and it just saves money. I, it's just a good consumer move. I, I don't think it's going to change the hacking issues of the game of the system because you have to play so many of the games online anyway. So thank you, Sony. Should have done it sooner, but better late than ever. And there's another uh, feature that, that uh, you guys wrote up wrote about it ours it's uh, clues that there are going to be speed improvements for older games because this, the ps4 pro is so awesome this caught us all by surprise <laughs> sony has said for quite some time that if the playstation 4 pro will add boosts to new games but not to old ones they don't want to mm -hmm. break the compatibility you should be able to buy the playstation 4 pro and be able to play all of the old games well apparently somebody said wait a second let's just make this an optional toggle so now there's going to be inside of this new um, firmware coming the same one with the hard drive stuff there will be a little slip switch you can toggle for boost mode which is just going to unlock all of the gpu bonus that is just sitting there inside the PlayStation 4 Pro. Uh, Mark Cerny from Sony described the chip inside of the PS4 Pro as like a butterfly and that the new stuff is like an additional identical wing. And so for older games, they just turn that half off. So they're going to turn it back on. And so already we're seeing people in the wild who've gotten beta access to this patch. There's a beta version of already in the wild. Uh, and they're testing games out on it, the ones that kind of struggle and lag and have choppy rates and things like that on the original PlayStation 4. And with this boost mode on the newer PlayStation 4 Pro, they are getting closer to that locked kind of silky frame rate 
that video game fans really want, especially in these high action games. Bloodborne is, in my opinion, the biggest of these. People are testing it out on it. Bloodborne being part of the Dark Souls family of an incredibly tough sword and magic kind of gaming. Uh, it's not a game you want to play in which the screen starts lagging and then all of a sudden you died because you weren't able to react in time. That's getting improvements. That's uh, that's reason enough for me. Being able to play Bloodborne and have it not chug and be terrible is a super exciting prospect. So if you did already pay the extra for a PS4 Pro, you you are about to possibly get a serious boost. The question is, how will it affect all of the games? We really don't know. There are a lot of games that were never designed with any additional hardware in mind. They may not change at all whatsoever. Uh, it's super early news, but it's clearly it's coming. There will be a lot of testing, and I'm very excited to go back through my older, choppier games and, you know, fingers crossed. Play them again. Because, you know, you've got all sorts of spare time. No new games to play. <sighs> oh, man. <laughs> Finally, you teased last week that you uh, might be spending some quality time with Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, the game does look awesome, by the way, reading through uh, what you have on ours. What can you tell us about your four-hour session? I did not know what to expect from this video game. Horizon Zero Dawn was announced in middle of 2015 as part of one of Sony's E3 events. They had beautiful sizzle reel of a a braid-haired woman uh, running through a forest and then all of a sudden robot deer and robot dinosaurs appear and look giant and shiny and luminous. And it kind of looked like a Sony version of grown-up Zelda. But they didn't show the game off for, God, over a year, except for one little demo I went to that was really weak. Um, so I didn't know what to expect. So they finally invited me to LA, sat me down with the game and said, go to town, sit down for four hours. It's, you know, just like your own living room, only with the most expensive television I'd ever seen in my life. Uh, and I got to play it for a while and I came to find that this is a, in my opinion, new kind of open world adventure. There's a lot of stuff that's familiar. You're running around doing quests, kind of fetch quests where people are like, go kill this thing, run over there. But the real key and the reason I'm excited about it is because it's all about the combat. These robotic creatures run around. I'm not quite sure why you're fighting them. There was some of the plot that was skipped. I personally felt kind of bad killing some of these things. Uh, but when they come out, they don't come running at you like bad guys in an army game. These have what I call herd mentality. They have different places in that biological order in terms of alphas and betas, in terms of the leaders of the pack and the followers and wimps. Uh, certain animals will just run away. Other animals will crowd together and protect each other. Some will do sort of a where the leader will come at you from the front and then the wimpier ones will come at you from the side. And as a result, you don't play as much of a, as a as a soldier as you do a trapper and hunter. You have lots of interesting mechanical traps you can place down. You're expected to run through all of your different weapons, including a bow and arrow and electrical traps. Uh, there's one where you could tie the one of the animal's legs up in order to stop it while you're dealing with everything else. And you can even use your little magical spear that you use to hijack these creatures and take them over either to have them fight on your half or to turn them into your personal horse that you can ride around. I was so smitten. It's a beautiful game. There was a lot to do. And I really felt excited that they were treating the idea of fighting something in the wild like you're actually fighting something in the wild. It's kind of like Far Cry 3 if Far Cry 3 was actually amazing as opposed to just pretty good. Hmm. Um, yeah, really, really surprised. And the plot and, the plot and dialogue that I encountered, not a ton of it, was I, I, I told other friends that I didn't feel embarrassed when I was telling people about this game. I would sit down, someone who's not in the games, put this on, and it's not the most amazing script ever, but it felt mature enough, had some really interesting looks about cultural clashes and like tribalism and how that might reflect our own real world based on this alternate earth with robots running around. Uh, so all in all, so far so good, but only four hours. So I we're going to find out at the end of February how it really is. That's when the game comes out. But so far, I'm a lot more excited than I was. Excellent. Yeah, it looks fantastic. End of February for that. Um... Cool Strong stuff. female leads in video games. Also, please. It's, yeah. it's it's so easy and she's so awesome. Her name's Alloy and she's a butt kicker. Sorry. And she's wearing some more clothes than they were in Fire Emblem, Emblem Heroes. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's almost like she's trying to protect herself from nature and weather and things. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>
<laughs> the way it should be. Uh, awesome. Sam Iskovich, Ars Technica. Thanks, as always, for coming on. And uh, I I don't know what you're going to be playing all weekend. Probably Fire Emblem Heroes. I'm going to be banging on my internet connection so that the video watchers will get a better bit of lag right here. I think <laughs> yeah, was... you can hear me live, but we're having this like time warp thing going on. Yeah. It's so okay. It's like a kung fu you, movie. It's okay. All you podcasters have the edge this time. But anyway. <laughs> well, I would also, uh, I know you moved to a new spot, and I miss seeing uh, your board games behind you so oh there's a there's a lot of space there it'll be it th that's the board game zone i'm not even kidding i was thinking about this before you called like which board games am i gonna put up there <laughs> <laughs> we'll look forward to that next week thanks again sam we'll talk to you soon